Hi, my name is Gary Brown, and I'm Vice President of Technical Services with AMVIC. At AMVIC, one of our goals is to provide innovative, energy efficient, and comfortable expanded polystyrene insulation products. Today's webinar is designed to help shorten the learning curve working with AMVIC's insulated products to make your experience a much better one. Also pictured is Marty McCartney, our Field and Technical Support Manager, and Vadim Novak, our Building Science Specialist. Today we will be talking about AMVIX products that can be used under a concrete slab. We will cover tools, accessories, and materials, as well as the installation process. We will go into more detail with AMPEX and AMRED installation process, as they are a more unique product and sort of new to our product. The introduction. Why insulate? There are many reasons why one might want to insulate a concrete slab. It could be solely a building code requirement. It might be energy saving comfort or a combination of all of them. What you see in front of you are three diagrams of a typical basement slab at the footing. The most left diagram shows a completely uninsulated wall. The middle one shows a more traditional finished basement where under the slab insulation did not go over to the footer. This sometimes happens due to poor planning or lack of understanding. On the right, you see a fully insulated and finished foundation with the proper location for the under slab insulation to be at. What you're seeing here is a thermal gradient overlay on top of the details from the previous slide using a heat transfer analysis software. The darkest purple is the coldest temperature while the light red color is the warmest. The first thing I'd like to point out is that in the middle diagram, where you can see a large area of green color, which is which roughly correlates to about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius temperature. The second thing I'd like to point out is a diagram on the right, which shows a fairly consistent light red color, which correlates to approximately 20 degrees Celsius, which is much warmer. The point of this comparison is to show the impact of adding insulation under your slab, but also to show that proper insulation techniques is crucial as it can impact both the occupant's thermal comfort, the surface temperature of the floor, as well as energy efficiency, heat loss around the perimeter. AMVIC has a wide range of insulation products that can be used in a variety of locations for residential construction. Typically, interior slabs such as basements or slab on grade should always be insulated. Garage slabs are generally not insulated. However, many consumers prefer to have a heated garage slab and hydronic heating is an ideal application for this Driveways and walkways are mostly only insulated when using hydronic for snowmelt application. There are additional uses for insulation that are more common for commercial or agricultural applications, which include workshops, hockey rinks, hospitals, places of worship, barns, cold storage facilities, and warehouses. For some of these applications, there is a need for just the insulation value, like in a hockey rink, for example, where other applications, the slab would only be insulated when used in conjunction with a hydronic system. AMVIC has a wide range of products that can be used for under slab application. Starting on the left is EnviroSheet, which comes as a rigid sheet insulation board. It is plain high density foam. Silverboard takes the EnviroSheet and adds a plastic film on each side, giving it additional strength as well as a vapor resistant property. The smallest member of the family is Ampex which comes as a two by four fully molded panel with a unique pattern for hydronic application. On the right is Ambrad, which is our newest addition. It comes as a four by four panel, also fully molded, also with integrated film, similar to that of Ampex. It also has a geometric pattern, but unlike Ampex, the pattern is on the bottom of the panel. This panel is designed to be part of a radon mitigation system. All of these products come as type two foam or higher and are referred to as high density for ease of understanding. For below grade application, especially under a concrete slab, you will wanna make sure you're using the right type of panel. All of our products are tested and certified by QAI testing laboratories. They provide a third party testing and quality control for all of our products. There is a whole suite of tests that our products undergo, such as compressive strength, R value testing, water absorption, flexural strength, water vapor permeance, density, air permeance, and more. Our EnviroSheet and Silverboard product lines also have surface burning characteristics since they can also be used and installed above grade. All of our listings are available online and can be found directly on the QAI website. 
We're now going to go over the products in a little more detail. As I mentioned, EnviroSheet is a high-density rigid foam board made from expanded polystyrene, or EPS for short. It comes in many different variations and thicknesses, ranging from half an inch to six inches. The R value range is from 4 to 4.4, while compressive strength starts at 16 PSI and goes up to a 60 PSI. Thickness, R value, and compressive strength are all proportionate to each other. As one increases or decreases, so do the other properties of the board. For under slab application, the most typical board you will see are either two or two and a quarter inch for an R10 and generally 20 to 30 PSI. Typically, the boards have square edges. Shiplap is possible, but only available as a special order. We have a data sheet and installation manual available on our website for easy viewing. We constantly work to improve and add information so our documents get updated frequently. Silverboard is essentially the same material as EnviroSheet in the core, but has laminated plastic film on both sides of the board. There are also metallized coating between the film and the EPS core, giving it some reflective properties, but that's more applicable to above grade application. The boards range in thickness all the way from again, one half inch to six inch, similar to EnviroSheet. It has similar compressive strength range, and the main difference there is there is no 60 PSI variant but the R value is a little higher when compared to the respective EnviroSheet variant. The double-sided lamination gives the boards improved strength as well as the vapor barrier properties. Since the film is plastic, taping the seams is extremely easy as long as there's no dust on the film. Keep in mind that in order to use silverboard as a vapor barrier, the tape also needs to have vapor barrier properties. We have a few variations of silverboard products with slightly different properties and applications, and we have separate data sheets for them. For below grade application, the data sheet you see on the screen is the one you should be looking at when looking for information for your future project. For those with a keen A, you may have noticed that our installation manual looks very similar to the one we showed two slides ago for EnviroSheet. And if you thought that, then you are correct. They are indeed the same. The rigid board installation manual is the same one for both Silverboard and EnviroSheet, since in many cases the two products can be interchanged. If you're looking to do something but not sure if Silverboard or EnviroSheet would be the correct choice, that information is not covered in the manual. Feel free to reach out to us and we will do our best to help you. Now, Ampex. Ampex is a different product. It is a smaller panel, not a full-size sheet, only two by four. That dimension works quite well, especially for basements, as it makes moving the panels down to the basement much easier. The panels are either 30 or 45 PSI. The higher density is geared more towards commercial and industrial application with heavy machinery or equipment. The most typical board is the R10, which is three and three quarter inches thick. Each half inch increase in the thickness yields an R2 increase in the R value, the highest R value being R16. These panels are designed to speed up and simplify the installation of PEX piping for hydronic application. They can also be used just as regular insulation, but that doesn't really make sense as the cost of the panel versus the thickness. You can see that Ampex also has a plastic film on the top of the panel. This film is slightly different than the Silverboard one. It also functions as a built-in vapor barrier. The panel has four-sided interlock, which allows the film to be continuous, and generally you do not require a separate vapor barrier. Check with your building official to be sure. Again, standard data sheet and quick and simple installation manuals are available on the technical page of our website. The next product we'd like to talk about is AMRAD. AMRAD is a recent addition to our lineup. This product is designed to go specifically under a basement slab or a slab on grade in houses where there are issues with soil gas, such as radon. Without going into too much detail, radon is very harmful to humans and can greatly increase the risk of lung cancer depending on the exposure duration and concentration level. The 4x4 AMRAD panel is designed to be installed as part of a system that can evacuate the gas from under the slab by depressurizing it that's what the channels are for. The pattern style, shape and ratio of the void to solid are very unique and were designed to provide the strongest panel while maintaining the needed void percent space to be on par or better than four inch of crushed stone or gravel. For high risk areas generally, the local building code would have some extra requirements for the slab. There are simple test kits available for radon in case you might think that you are in a higher risk area. 
AMRED comes as a four by four panel available only in R12 and R16, which are three and a half and four and a half inches thick respectively. AMRAD also has an integrated film on top, which functions as an air and vapor barrier with Ampex four-sided four style interlock, but unlike Ampex, does require the seams to be taped with approved tape in order to maintain its performance. AMRAD can also be used in both retrofit applications and new construction, but one would need to be mindful of the thickness of the panel to ensure there is no issue with the height, door sill, etc. AMRAD also has its separate data sheet, which includes information about some accessory products that would be needed for installation. We do have a dedicated installation manual go that goes into detail about the various installation requirements, which we will partly cover later in this presentation. This slide is essentially a summary of the key aspects of all the products I've just mentioned to you to allow for a quick comparison. In some instances, the product can be interchanged, but ideally we try to provide the best value product for the correct application. This way you get a streamlined installation process that is simple and clear to follow while providing all the benefits of an insulated slab. One important thing to keep in mind when trying to figure out what thickness of virus sheet or silverboard is needed for a given project is to remember that the stated R value is measured in one inch increments. That means to figure out the total R value for any Enviro sheet or Silverboard product, take the desired thickness and multiply times the R value per inch. This can also be done in reverse to figure out the thickness if you know what R value you're trying to achieve. Again, if uncertain, please feel free to contact us. We'll be more than happy to assist. Next, we will review the tools, accessories, and materials. If you've attended our ICF or AMDEC webinars, the tools needed for slab installation are pretty minimal by comparison. You will need a utility knife, a fine tooth saw, tape measure, and spray foam. Safety tools are needed for concrete pouring and finishing tools such as a pull float to finish the surface. These are standard typical tools that yourself or your contractor would have. In terms of material, you need vapor barrier tape as well as spray foam and sealant. Depending on the slab, you may need rebar, rebar chairs, or welded wire mesh. For installations with EnviroSheet, you may also require a vapor barrier, such as a 6 mil poly. A self-adhering membrane and PVC adapter would be needed for AMRED installation, while PEX piping would be needed for AMPEX installation. Now for the installation process. Going back to the slide with the thermal gradient, I can't stress this enough that the installation should go under the footer to eliminate this type of thermal bridge. The diagram on the right shows a condition that does happen, but we encourage installers to steer away from this if possible. Although Ampex is not just a regular flat sheet insulation board, it also has a thicker, but the same principles apply here. You want the installation to be continuous. When compared to regular two inch rigid foam boards, which are very typical, Ampex would have at least an inch and three eighths extra height, depending on the chosen panel R value. So when you're digging the foundation, please ensure that you dig it a little deeper to accommodate for the extra height. It's very important piece of information to remember specifically for Ampex is that the slab thickness is measured from the top of the nubs or mushrooms, but the concrete volume that we have on our website calculator includes the space between the nubs. In situations that you're very much limited to in height, which can be the case in many retrofit applications, you can use regular two inch rigid foam insulation to cover the protruding footer. You can see that short silverboard strips on the right diagram, then use AMRAD or AMPEX to match the same height. This will save you a little height, but will also create more labor when having to carry two material types. This is significantly better than not having any insulation above the footer. Ideally, a little planning in advance can really help to streamline the installation time and making it easier and simple. Now I'd like to show you some typical installations of our product in a few configurations. Here you see just in sheet properly placed over the footer. This type of installation would require a vapor barrier. Typically a six mil poly would be installed between the foam and the slab. The poly should run a few inches up the wall and needs to be caulked with sealant around the perimeter. This is a traditional way of insulating a slab as many of you would be familiar with. 
When using Silverboard, the installation process is very similar. However, it does not need a dedicated vapor barrier. Instead, the seams need to be taped with a vapor barrier tape. Both in VirusSheet and Silverboard, four inches of crushed stone or gravel is needed under the foam. Around the perimeter, there are two main ways to seal. You can use a sealant between the Silverboard and the foundation wall, or use a strip of six mil poly, overlap the few on each side and sealed with tape and caulking to the wall and silver board. As I mentioned before, Ampex panel also needs to cover the footer to make sure you have proper continuity of insulation. The panel should, should be offset, creating a running bond pattern. You do not need a vapor barrier here unless specifically outlined in your by your local building code because the Ampex built-in high impact polystyrene panel acts as a vapor barrier. AMRAD installation for a basement slab is virtually the same as Ampex. Panels need to be staggered to create a running bond pattern. A vapor barrier tape needs to be used for the seams. A peel and stick membrane needs to be used around the perimeter. As a side note, the peel and stick membrane can be replaced with sealed 6 mil poly. More on that later in our presentation. With this system, you do not need to have crushed gravel under it, but the soil does need to be proper graded and compacted. For more substantial concrete slabs in buildings such as fire stations, workshops, warehouses where rebar would be used, rebar chairs can be used with flat insulation. It's pretty straightforward. When looking at Ampex, one might initially think that rebar chairs cannot be used, but they can. Depending on the size of the rebar chair base, it might be needed to be placed directly on top of a single nub or span between a few of them as seen on the diagram on the left. For AMRAD, since it is also a flat top, typical installation process is followed. For slab on grade, the situation is much similar to what you have seen for the basement slab, with the biggest difference being in the slab portion itself. The slab would typically be thicker and potentially with reinforcement. Extra parameters would be outlined in your local building code. What you're seeing here is an example of a frost protected shallow foundation. The biggest thing to keep in mind when using a virus sheet is to make sure the vapor barrier is sealed to the wall and that there are a gravel bed to act as a capillary break. Silverboard installation is very similar to Enviro sheet with emphasis on correct sealing at the perimeter of the wall using tape or sealant. Ampex installation is mostly the same, but very important to remember to make sure the top of the knobs are aligned with the bottom of the slab to ensure that you have the correct slab thickness. Sealing Ampex panel is done with sealant due to the potential irregular edges when trimming any of the panels. AMRAD installation is the same, stagger pattern, tape seams, and using the same peel and stick membrane to seal the wall. Hydronic installation is becoming more common in many applications. We're going to use a typical residential car garage for the next few slides to illustrate a few key points. Insulated garages in general are not very typical. And even if someone chooses to insulate a garage, the slab might not necessarily be insulated. If you want to have a heated garage slab, then you will definitely want to insulate the slab. You would be looking at roughly the same R10 as a basement slab or a slab on grade. Using a virus sheet is the most traditional way of doing this, where a vapor barrier is required to go on top of the insulation. Welded wire mesh will be laid down and the PEX piping will be tied to the mesh. Once the concrete starts pouring, the mesh with the piping will be lifted to embed at roughly middle of the slab, but you don't want the piping to be too close to the surface of the concrete slab either. One side note to keep in mind for this type of insulation is that it's better to use the flat wire mesh, not the rolled one. We wanted to include a slide to illustrate a few key points when using silverboard as a vapor barrier. The seams need to be taped, which I mentioned a few times already. Stapling the piping down compromises the film, which would need to be addressed by using a thicker foam. A vapor barrier or retarder is generally a material that is under one perm. Vapor permeance is proportional to thickness of the foam. The thicker the foam, the less breathable the foam is. So if you're looking to staple PEX to silverboard, you would need to use a thicker board, sometime typically around two and a half inches for silverboard SB35. The other option is to install a vapor barrier under the foam or use welded wire mesh and zip tie the piping to it, both of which are more labor intensive alternatives. Generally speaking, it is recommended for the vapor barrier to be sandwiched between the insulation and the concrete slab. The last two slides bring us to Ampex. 
In my opinion, the best choice for most typical hydronic installations. Just lay down the panels on some granular or gravel and walk the PEX piping in. This helps eliminate all of the issues with vapor barrier continuity and eliminates the need for additional material and extra steps in the installation. The only thing that needs to be done is to seal around the perimeter, as I mentioned for base and slab on grade applications as well. I want to elaborate a little bit more on the actual steps in the Ampax installation. What you're seeing here is a typical foundation, an ICF foundation specifically, but it can be any foundation type. We include a load bearing circular seal column on top of a concrete pad to help show that condition impacts the installation process. The first step is fill not less than four inches of crushed stone or gravel. It needs to be properly compacted and level, which all standard practices for concrete slab installation. You'll start in one corner with either a half or a full panel since you need to stagger the joints. Keep putting the panels down until you reach the end. In most cases, you will need to trim the last panel, but through the magic of 3D modeling, we didn't have to do any cutting for the first row. If you started with a full panel for the first row, like we did a few slides ago, you would need to start with a half panel for your second row. You can use a utility knife or a fine tooth saw to cut the panel. Again, keep laying the panels until you reach the end. Trim the last panel as needed to fit the dimensions of your foundation. Again, keep laying the panels until you reach the end. Trim the last panel as needed to fit the dimensions of your foundation. When you reach a column or load bearing wall, you need to cut the panel to fit around it. It is important to measure twice and cut once, as we always say, to get it snug to fit around the column or wall as possible. Take the piece of foam that you've cut out and trim it to fit around the column. Use a sealant to seal the cut panel to any other cut piece and to the column itself. After that, continue with the installation of the panels until the entire area is covered. Once our panel is in place, you can just walk the PEX tubing in. If there is rebar or welded wire mesh, it would be installed after the PEX piping is placed. Make sure to seal the Ampex panels along the perimeter with sealant to the foundation wall. The last step is before the concrete finishes the surface and let it cure. I want to show you a similar process for AMRAD. We're going to use the same basement from the previous slide as a starting point, but this time for the AMRAD installation. Same as Ampex, you can either start with a half panel or a full one. The panels have the same interlock system along the edge as Ampex. Keep installing the panels until you reach the end. Normally you would need to trim the last panel, but again, through the power of 3D modeling, we don't need to trim the panel here. Since we started with a full panel for our first row, our second row would need to start with a half panel. Use a utility knife or a fine tooth handsaw to cut the panel. Keep laying the panels down until you reach a column or a wall. Cut the panel to fit around the column. You do not need to be as precise here as you would want to be with Ampex since we would need to use a more robust sealing technique here. Once the panel has been trimmed and placed, cut the small piece to fit inside the opening. You do need to use any sealant or adhesive to secure it in place unless you have a bigger gap between the panel and the column. Keep installing the panels until you reach the end. Trim the last panel as needed to fit. Finish installing all the remaining row following the same pattern. Now we need to install the adapter for the exhaust system. The location needs to be far enough to clear the footer, but not too far from the wall itself. We recommend to install the adapter at the intersection of the intended lines like we're showing in the render for best airflow. But technically anywhere along the lines would be acceptable. Do not install the adapter along the edges of the panel. Depending on the size of your slab, you might need to have two exhaust systems. You can use a utility knife and a handsaw or a drill with a hole saw to cut the foam out. Use polystyrene foam compatible sealant to install the adapter. Apply a single bead on the underside of the adapter, flip it, and place it down. What you see on the left and what it looks like underneath on the right, you can see how installing it when the lines intersect gives the adapter the most access for best airflow. Cut a section of pipe to approximately 12 inches long. Make sure the bottom is clean by removing any burrs from the inside and outside of the pipe. Use cement to connect the 4-inch pipe to the adapter and hold it there for a minimum of 30 seconds. The connection method is done using standard plumbing practices and material. Take some of your vapor barrier tape, cut it into small sections and apply along the edges of the adapter, creating roughly the same square or octagon shape. You could also take a section of the peel and stick membrane and just cut a round 
hole in it instead of the sealant and tape. Take the sealant and apply a single bead between the pipe and the adapter. It is important to cap the pipe and mark it with radon information as required by the building code. These functions as rough in for the rest of the radon gas exhaust system. The cap will be removed later when the rest of the system will be installed. Use the air and vapor barrier tape over all the seams. For protruding elements such as columns, use a bead of sealant and tape to seal it. Or you can cut the peel and stick membrane into smaller sections and use that instead. Use Anvix pre-cut below grade peel and stick membrane along the perimeter. Membrane should overlap at least three inches over the panels and the wall itself. If some protruding items cannot be sealed with the tape, use smaller sections of this membrane to seal around them. We would recommend using a smaller section of membrane as they are easier to work with when installing. Also for user installation, we recommend to notch the release paper on the back with a utility knife. This allows to install a membrane on one side, then remove the release paper on the second side. It makes it a lot easier to install it this way. In a situation where product is not available, using a six mil poly sealant with acoustic sealant to the wall and panels would also be acceptable. This is also part of the building code. Once everything is sealed, concrete is poured and allowed to cure. You can see that the rough end for the venting system is sticking up from the concrete and is not too far from the wall as we had indicated in a previous slide. As I mentioned before, the AMRED panels are only part of the solution for radon mitigation. The rough end is connected to an active, continually running exhaust fan that draws the air from the channels and vents it out, which is what you're seeing in the render. I'd like to now share some projects that we have done to show you some examples of how our product works in the field. This is a basement slab with Ampex. You can see the gravel under it. There are two load bearing wood frame walls, which is a polypropylene membrane protruding from the bottom from the concrete. Another basement slab with Ampex. Here you can see the concrete being placed and finished with a bull float, both powered and manual. Ampex is commonly used for exterior driveways and walkways. In situations where you have stairs, like in this house pictured here, high density silverboard can be used to act as an insulation layer. Another example of an Ampex driveway. Note the concrete hoses and the guys with the boost just walking on the panels directly without an issue because of the high impact polystyrene film on top. Pictured here is what a heated driveway looks like, just in case you were wondering. In this particular project, while it is a very large home, typical driveway can be easily done and is not cost prohibitive to install and to operate. Here we see a fire station. The engineer initially wanted to use a 45 PSI Ampex panel. However, after double checking, they determined that the 30 PSI panel would be sufficient. They also used six inches of concrete on top of this. This is a farm workshop. You can see it's a very large substantial slab along with rebar placed at approximately 21 inch spacing. This type of application is going to receive heavy agricultural equipment and it would be parked on it. Poultry barns are another application for Ampex. Here you can see the installers are walking the piping into the panels. After the fact, here are some very content chickens after a heated floor has been installed. Another example of a poultry barn. Here they have a much tighter rebar spacing. You can see that the concrete hose has intermittent support to make sure that the joint brackets don't dislodge the rebar, the piping, or the foam insulation itself. Another application for Ampex is installing at the bottom of a pool. This is not a typical installation. However, with more and more people using ICF pools, it is becoming a lot more common. Here we see a refrigerated warehouse in Etobicoke, Ontario. We see high density silverboard being used in this application, such as a refrigerated warehouse. Another warehouse project, this time with concrete pouring stage. Another fairly common application for our high density versions of silverboard and virus sheets are used for ice rinks. In this case, the joints are staggered to provide the best long-term coverage by the foam, which we highly recommend anytime there's more than a single layer of foam being used. This would apply both to horizontal and vertical application. Here's another example of an ice rink, this time with silverboard insulation. This is an older photo when at that time the silverboard graphics were only printed on one side. Today we have the graphics printed on both sides. They are a lot larger and ease to read. Another example of high density silverboard insulation. 
The main difference here is that this was done in an existing building. In this case, the rebar had to be epoxied into the existing slab to maintain structural integrity on one side, while the other had to be thermally broken. EPS foam is commonly used for geotechnical application for bridges, roads, highways, etc. In this case, the project called for some insulation for void filling and high density silverboard was selected. In most incidents, we would not want to see the different layers staggered, but in this particular case, it is. It did not matter so that the contractor opted into stacking the sheets vertically, which sped up the installation time. This picture does not have any of our products. What we're showing here is what the gravel or crushed stone looks like prior to insulation being installed. Once you have your gravel properly installed, as you have seen in the previous slide, the installation of Ampex will be next. This is an example of a more complex layout for the piping and how it can be done with Ampex mushroom pattern. In this photo, you can see that everyone is just standing on Ampex nubs without any particular precaution. Generally speaking, you would want to place the concrete more or less where it is supported to be without too much spreading around. You can use a shovel or a rake like in this photo to help move the concrete around. For a more final finish of the concrete slab, a bull float is used. They have many different sizes and types. In larger commercial and industrial size jobs, they would want to be using a power trowel machine, something similar to what you're seeing on the left in the background. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about our website and our technical resources that we have available for you. All of the information you've seen in our webinar can be found online on our website. If you'd like to watch this webinar again or send it to someone, it is available on our YouTube page, which is highlighted in red, or on our technical resource page, highlighted in yellow. For additional training and other webinars, visit our training page, which is highlighted in green. If you need to find your local territory manager and how to get in touch with them, click on where to buy tab in the right hand corner of the screen. If you have any questions or require any assistance, you can use the contact us page highlighted in blue to get in touch with us directly. Our technical resources page is broken down to categories with all of the product lines under each category to help you easily find what you're looking for. We have data sheets, installation manuals, design guides, 3D models, BIM, and technical bulletins. If you are unable to find the information you're looking for, please feel free to reach out to us by clicking the Contact Us tab at the bottom right-hand corner of the website. The Ampex calculator is located under Calculation Tools. This is very simple to use. The only thing you need to do is punch in the area and thickness of the concrete slab, and it will provide the number of panels and volume of concrete needed. As mentioned above, concrete slab thickness is measured from the top of the nub. In case you need to convert from imperial to metric units or vice versa, the R value converter is located under calculation tools as well. It is very simple to use. Thank you for attending today's webinar. Always know that the ANVIC team is here to support your build. Thank you.